with the movement now assembled, it's time to time the strike side. And you might well be asking, well, you know, the strike seemed to be timed correctly when you took the movement apart. Why didn't you scribe some marks on the different gear wheels so you could get them meshed back together easily? And in fact, when I first started doing this, that's what I did. But I learned uh, that's not really the right way to do it, uh, to mark the parts like that. So I go through this procedure now. Besides, there's nothing to guarantee that the timing was correct anyway, and I've taken a lot of clocks apart that, that turned out to be the case, where I had to do some adjustments to get the um, strike events set up correctly. But if we look if we look at what's going on here, this uh, count lever needs to drop into a slot on this count wheel at the same time that the drop lever drops into a slot there. And if I um, tension this, and I'll use a winding key to do this because it gives a more accurate um, feel for the direction of the gearing, which way it's supposed to go. I'm not winding the spring. I'm just using my hand to apply. For, and you see it's very easy to apply too much pressure. I've only got three gears in the train right now. Uh, to take the lash out of the gearing, because there is considerable lash. And you'll see that this third wheel is worn. And that's actually the only uh, pivot that I could find any appreciable uh, degree of uh, wear in that I would um, have any cause of concern for. And it's not even worn that much. It's worn oval just a little bit, but it's still well within the confines of the oil sink. And since this is my own clock and it's not going to be run continuously, just a couple weeks each year. I don't uh, feel it's necessary to go through the effort of um, pushing it. You see the back pivot is pretty tight. All the pivots on this clock really are pretty tight, with the exception of this one. And now that this movement's clean and is going to have some lubrication, this sh should be a non-issue for some time. But there is lash in these gears, and I'm going to hold the third arbor with a finger here and rotate this in the direction of normal operation and then let, let it slowly pay out so I can um, observe where the, the uh, drop takes place uh, when it goes to lock at the end of the striking sequence. And if you look, hold this up to the camera here so you can see. If you look, it's happening right on the edge of the count wheel. Okay, I've got the, um, the lever centered. It's happening right on the edge. So what that's telling me is this needs to be moved that way a little bit in relation to this the third wheel here. And to remove it, to move it in that direction, we need to move the second wheel one tooth counterclockwise. And I think that will give us about the timing that we want. So the trick now is, and this is why this is probably harder than actually putting the movement back together and why a lot of people will come up with um, shortcuts, is to get that pivot out of its hole that we can swing it away from the second arbor, where I can move the second wheel one tooth counterclockwise without disturbing things too much. And some people have these horological medieval torture devices known as plate spreaders. Um, I don't. I just kind of do it with my fingers. Now, I've got this spring hooked on there for the um, main strike control lever. I want to take that off so that the strike lever is not trying to jump out on me and cause problems. So I want to unhook that before we proceed.
Okay, get that out of the way. And then I've got this pillar nut backed off entirely. I've got this pillar nut backed off till it's almost flush. I've got this pillar nut backed off quite a ways. I haven't done anything with this pillar nut, though I might want to back it off just a touch. I don't really want to back anything off any further. In fact, I want to make sure that one's not going to come off. So I want to make sure that um, the stud, the uh, pillar, is even. And now with a uh, with this is why I left these gears out is spread the plate out just enough and push down on that so it stays with the back plate and I might have to have something here to pers uh, persuade it to go where I want it to go okay now now it's tricky because everything's popped out a little bit here because this has popped out and I don't know where it went as far as my one tooth off timing so at this point what I can do would be the easiest thing to do would be to rotate these things around and get that drop lever lined up centered with the hole and get the third wheel lined up centered with there and now get everything meshed back together again okay now I think what has to be made sure is in alignment is the levers They are probably the trickiest to get back in alignment. I don't think anything on the time side has gotten out of position. We need to pull that back in. There's one. We're hanging up on... Okay, that one's good. looks like we're in about position where it should drop back down there we go that lever was not in position the warning lever was not okay so now we get to test it again and that was kind of a false start in a way because when that second wheel popped out we lost a lot of what we had and I need to apply some attention there on this lever so I think what we'll do is we'll put its spring back like that we have a nice return with it laying here horizontally and then with the key and the fingers here I'm going to apply tension in the correct direction we are at the 12 o'clock run here Okay, I'm not sure I still like that. Yeah, this still needs a little bit of adjustment there. It's not where I want it to be. So we'll do this again very carefully here. It looks like we need to go about the same direction as before.
Looks like we really need to go about one tooth the opposite direction now. I don't think we moved it in the direction that we wanted to go previously. And I'll see if I can do this without uh, unhooking that. So what we need to do is keep the second wheel from popping out on us where we don't want it to go. Okay. Go one tooth that way and then remesh with the third wheel. Okay. We need to get the levers back in place. Okay. Get the things where they need to be. And okay. Get the there we go. Get things back in the right orientation. Everything else still seems to be all right. Apply tension. This is somewhat of a trial and error process, really. That looks pretty good. I think I can live with that. Let's see, that's two, three, that'd be the end of four. So this will be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now we need to mesh the fourth wheel in there. And the fourth wheel is going to rotate the same direction that the second wheel does and this pin is both the warning and locking pin so what we want to do is let's rotate this around a little bit here See, as this lever is coming in contact with the count wheel, this fourth wheel should be coming around to where it would intercept the um, locking arm of the count lever. So let's move this around till we get to a dropping another dropping point here. Should be right there. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do is try to hold the wheels from turning and spread the plates enough that I can mesh this fourth wheel in with the third wheel right there where it would be in contact with the locking arm. And to do that is somewhat tricky but we use the same techniques that we've been using already we can get the bottom pivot started just started first i've got i've got the fourth wheel engaged with the um, with the third wheel right now just just have it started engagement and gently Pry up on this plate enough that, okay, the bottom pivot is in. Okay, now that pivot is in. Felt like the levers may have popped. Nope, lever, everything is, is fine. 
So, let's try it now. Okay. Make sure our levers are all in the right spot. So it feels like it's binding on us. does act like it's binding just a little bit. Okay. Okay, there we go. So there's no fly in here, so it's easy for this thing to ramp up. Kind of got to regulate it, because it does not lock at high speeds. Okay. That should be the second to last strike in this sequence. Okay, and it's just, uh, I want to say maybe a few teeth early. Because you see where the count, uh, the count lever is in the count wheel? There's the pin, and it. Okay. There, it's just starting to drop, and there's the pin, and then it's not able to drop all the way. The. See, it's still resting on the edge of the opening there. So it needs to go another tooth over. Uh. So what we do, we don't need to mess with this pivot. We need to mess with that bottom pivot. And we need to swing this wheel out and change the meshing uh, one tooth. Okay? It might be easier to do it with the movement inverted like this. It's, you know, kind of just a personal preference how you want to do it. Let's try it with this, with the movement sitting here this way. So we're going to lift this up. We're going lift to the, lift the plate. And lift up on this wheel where we can swing it out. Okay. Now which way do we need to go? We need to go one tooth. Now we can remesh. All right. Looks like we did that without destroying anything else. So let's try it again. Okay, where are we at now? Still, we need to do that again and go one tooth. Did I go the right way? It needs to go one tooth counterclockwise. Try this again. Everything else is fine. Okay.
perfect. We can put the fly in now. We can test it at full at regular, at normal speed. Because of the way the pinions are made, these lantern pinions with these shrouds on the ends, you can't just stab it in there like this. There's usually, you know, if it was just a regular cut pinion, you could slide it in there and, and engage it in mesh. What you've got to do is you've got to swing it in to the mating gear. So you see I engage the top pivot first and then lift up on it and engage it and then back in and then we can go ahead and put the pillar nut in right here and did that go the right way usually you can tell which way these goes on these go on the side that faces the plate has nice flat edges the side that faces up away from the plate is rounded so it needs to go this way And extreme care should be taken with this nut because of the proximity to the escape wheel teeth. You do not want to round off a tooth. We can go ahead and all, run all the other nuts down at this point, too. There should not be any reason to um, mess with any of those. Okay. Alright, so this will be a... Uh, All right, that looks good. See, it's nicely centered in the slot. Everything's engaged real nice. Okay, and you see, occasionally I, I, I wind it up a little bit so that as I'm testing it like this, I'm using total power off of the key, but I do that to keep from continuing to turn the spring in the unwinding direction because I don't want it to pop off the hook on the center of the um, Great Wheel Arbor there. At this point, I think we can go ahead and attach the spring on the warning lever. Get it over there like that. spring is trying to come off. Yeah, you go there. There's our other one. It's not even in the right part of the world. Some guys can be kind of tricky, can't they? I put that fly fan there in the way too makes it even worse. Sometimes tweezers are just not the right tool for the job. You need something more substantial like a pair of pliers to grasp these things. But this spring here goes around the Hold this on. Try to push it over there where I can get it to show up on the other side of the pillar and hook it. This might be a situation where I need to use a little hook tool. I don't know if I have one handy or not, though.
but just a pair of regular needle nose pliers. Bam! Much easier. Alright, and the bell means it's uh, time to cut the video off. This is a double length video. Got the warning lever. Tension is nice. And there's the... Okay. Alright, so that has it. Next video will be uh, lubrication and um, making the movement ready to case back up and run. So, this is Oklahoma Bridges, and thank you for following along. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed it.